so that you, uh, you know, copy and paste all that chat into a text file because there's a lot of really good information that flies through there. I won't name names, but I could. And some people are, you know, really active and a lot of dialogue happens. And I think this is one of those shows uh, where we talked to B.B. Farber about her, you know, a couple of really wonderful sites and her newest site. But it's just a lot of really great information. And, you know, some of this information then gets looked at, reviewed, and then gets further conversation here in our chat. Well, Steve just, just posted something that I didn't know even existed. He said there's an activator for uh, telomerase called Ozyme. Um I didn't even know such a thing existed. But there's so much information, and the people are so astute about what's going on all the time. There's always something new coming up. And speaking of new coming up, B.B. Farber has always had Next World TV. And she is doing Next Word Health TV. So we're going to do some little videos that she's going to post about all the free software and things that we do. She's been doing this Next Word TV for years, and there's probably over a thousand videos. And I love her tagline, Common Sense Solutions. She is absolutely beautiful. If you ever get to her personal website, in um, she doesn't like what's happening in our world and how the government is taking over food and water and air. She wants people to be able to look at their own health and have dominion over their own health. She is a musician and a songwriter, so you'll be hearing part of that. Are we going to play her song? Yes, her song is part of the show, so we'll have that. She'll intro it uh, in the interview. Okay. And it's a wonderful song. I I have to download it from someplace because it's a great. Once everybody hears it, it's really it's so true. I couldn't find it online, so she just supplied it to us. I don't know if she's going to put that on her um, Facebook. That's probably where it is. So B B B I B I Faber F A U B E R, very giving of her time on topics like uh, self sufficiency, and the main thing that we're going to be talking about is how we can take back our control of our life and, and self sustaining, even from the perspective of the city dwellers who think they don't have any room to go. She offers them suggestions for that. So about read I'll just read this. She's a cur curator of the online video gallery, www.nextworldtv.com. It's a free surface that searches the internet for compelling videos about relocalizing the economy, growing food, permaculture, reducing waste, alternative energy. She emphasizes positive initiatives and common sense. She really doesn't like the idea that vaccinations and radiation and fluoridation are is everywhere and that she feels like that's causing health problems. So beautiful person, very down to earth. And Richard and I did a pre record with her last week so um, she could have the day off and not have to work on the weekend like we're doing. So Richard Take it I, will, I will open this by saying that this morning, at one of the things on Dee's site, and, and Sherry and I will be posting things in chat, and Sherry will be so, showing some of the videos on her site as we're listening to the interview with Dee Dee. It's one of the great things that if you subscribe, which costs you nothing, uh, that you'll get an email, sometimes daily, uh, with a short video. And for example, the video this morning was, uh, and this is, these are not videos she produces, these are videos that she aggregates and curates from all over. And this morning was about a group of people who are doing work in Thailand, teaching people who are previously poachers, because they had to do something to survive, how to start growing their own mushrooms and taking them to market. And so they've reduced poaching in India in the past five years by 70%, I mean, sorry, in Thailand, by something like 70%. 
and that's an example of the kind of information that BB is, you know, reposting on Next World TV and the news site, which will be announced in the interview. So here we go. I really have to ask, how did you, how did you get into doing all of this? I mean, you have a whole other career, a whole other life. Has this always been a driving force for you, the Next World TV and your other exciting announcements? And I mean, how did you get here? Oh, that's such an interesting question. I think I think the answer is uh, uh, I had a, a very radical musician boyfriend who who I guess opened my eyes. I've always been into sustainability in the sense that I've always I've always known that we're doing everything upside down and wrong. I've been aware of of the, the food system, you know the. The, the crime of how we how we raise animals on feedlots, the pollution involved. I've always been a vegetarian, sort of green-minded person, but then but then I really understood that almost everything in our lives was leading us to fall off a cliff. I mean, every time I put on an air conditioner or, or used a plastic bag, I, I began to really see that this is it, it, it has devastating consequences. Just my normal life. Forget me eating or driving big cars. I mean, just just getting through a day in America is polluting, and and we're it's not sustainable. It's not working. I was just always led to believe that it would sort of work out. You know, there's going to be a solution. There's a way to metabolize this waste, and there are organizations keeping things in check. And then I believe. Around the time of the financial crash, I realized, no, it's we're not. This is we are we are headed off a cliff. There's no grown-ups at home. Nobody's running this show. We are destroying the earth. It's true. Uh, I I became um, fascinated with the idea of, uh, from the point of view of peak oil, which which has changed a lot now in, in since 2008. But I saw a lot of documentaries, which which made clear to me that. We're not going to have cheap oil forever. And I, I never really understood that all of my comfort and sanitation and cheap products and food coming to me cheaply, I never understood that this was all at the root because of cheap energy in my lifetime, which is a, a new phenomenon, you know, the last 100, 150 years or something. And it may be over in my lifetime. I just happen to live in this bubble of cheap energy in the form of oil. Uh, so, so I became fascinated with, with, oh my goodness, what, well, what if there's no more cheap energy? What are we going to have to do? And, and I, uh, I am a songwriter and, um, I, 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 I started writing about that, reading about that. And one thing led to another. I, I started this, this website, which, which is called nextworldtv.com. Nextworldtv.com. It's a free service. I have the, a thousand videos, I believe, up there now of things, of videos that all have to do with sustainability. How, how, but they're all positive. They're, they're mostly positive initiatives. It's not doomsday stuff. It's not preparing for the worst apocalyptic scenarios. It's all about little and big things we can all be doing. Uh, how we can collect rainwater, grow more food locally, um, stay healthy, you know, make our own products at home, avoid buying plastic, avoid polluting. Um, so this is, this is, it, 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 it's, um, they're both passions of mine. But since you asked, I think it'd be a great uh, opportunity to, to, why don't I, um, why don't I introduce you to one of my songs, which is very much written about this scenario of, of when we no longer have cheap goods coming in from China and we're going to have to make everything ourselves. It's a song called Billion Things, and it's about just two people talking about all the things that we're going to have to make ourselves. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
million things. So I have to make a lot of all these balls before you win. Gonna ask me to hammer some nails and I'll take this big girl, put in their big tail. Gonna take us in a new direction. Gonna start a brand new
the way people have always been, working together in community and working with the land. That's going to happen again, I, I believe. I love the idea of what you're doing. I, I love all the topics from everything from environment and food and GMOs and permaculture and transportation and wisdom, inspiration. Maybe of all of these topics, hundreds of topics, what are people coming back to? What are people hungry for? A, a lot of cherry. Yes, thank you for asking us. Uh, people are uh, a few things. They're really into the do-it-yourself. So if I put up a video about how to make a green roof or a uh, um, how to make your own um, anything to do with increasing yield in the garden or, or how to do something inexpensively like um, anything from indoor composting to, gosh, an aquaponics system. That you know, that means you you have fish and plants that are in symbiosis, and the plants feed the fish, and the fish waste feeds the plants, and and it, it's a way to to create both fish and vegetable with uh, with no soil and no waste. So when I do anything on how to make your own rain barrel or, or collect rainwater or do that, that that's very popular. Also, very popular is anything to do with health. So much so that I, I started a whole new channel, which just launched a few days ago. It's called Next World Health TV. Also, same format. It's free to join. You get a few videos per week to your inbox of, about um, alternative cures, how to keep a healthy gut, the importance of eating fermented foods, uh, you know, ancient wisdom on, on how to stay healthy, even without refrigerated foods or without, without modern anything. It's about herbs, it's about supplements, it's about balancing. You know, people people used to know how to stay healthy and, and correct imbalances. And there's a whole subsection on Eastern healing, which is all about maintaining a balance in the body as a preventative health measure. You know, instead of our Western mindset, which just, well, I'll go to the drugstore, I'll go to the doctor, I'll go to the hospital, and you just keep externalizing the problem. But, but I think we're going to all get back to... Knowing ourselves, our bodies, the land, how everything works together, and, and tuning in instead of tuning out that that which used to be given for a human. If people want to get on your mailing list and get um, a subscription and all these things every week, are you send things out weekly? Uh, um, it's it's going to be it's going to be about five mailings a week for for each channel. So. So uh, it's not a daily email, but about five a week, and it's free. You uh, you can unsubscribe at any time, and you can also just look at the website, even if you're not a subscriber. So it's uh, nextworldtv.com and nextworldhealthtv.com. Um, so Next World focuses more on permaculture, relocalizing economies, um, anything to do with permaculture and gardening and you know, beekeeping and uh, straw bale construction and how to make a solar shower and make a composting toilet and getting off the grid. And it, it's, um, it, it's, uh, it's, it's in that direction of sustainability pretty much. Uh, Next World Health TV is more um, motive. Well, it, it, I would say mind, body, spirit. Mind, body, spirit, motivation, um, spiritual teaching, uh, Eastern you know, like there might be a video on the benefits of Qigong, for example, or um, inspiring tales of somebody who's converted to these on their own. Uh, more, uh, more, more to do with health, mind, body, spirit, health. So both of them, both of them give, I hope, to, to, to people some some information that's much needed. I mean, we we need to start new discussions. I feel about how to take care of ourselves. We 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 just can't. We have a 40, you know, 50, between, I think something like 48 million Americans don't have health insurance. I mean, we're going to have to learn how to take care of ourselves. Do you, do you so think this, this is going to lead us back to a border society? I hope so. Okay. I, I think it really works well when it can work. Do you, do you do any barter yourself, or have you had experience with it? We do, and we give a lot of things away to help people. Like, we have 
software up right now, radiation exposure, because I think that is dampening our health tremendously from what we see coming into the clinic. And a lot of people are poisoned. We're poisoning our food and air and water and soil. And this is one of the things that you're, I don't want to say fighting, but you're promoting that these things that people can do. And it doesn't take a lot. They can just start with not buying plastic. Some of, some of the videos, I don't know if they're still up, but you've been on the show before and we've shown the videos of an ocean full of plastic. And yes. That, that's just very heartbreaking to see that and to see what it's doing to the, to the fish and to the environment. So very simple things people can do. They don't have to jump in and make their backyard into a garden, although that's wonderful. Right. I think part of what you're supporting is so wonderful is that in the uh, nerd programming world, uh, there's a thing referred to as open source, which has to do with how you put information out there and people work co-work on a project together to develop something that's open source. And I think of yes. what you're doing is such a huge, positive uh, direction toward open source, you know, open source. You know, here's right. like you, said, you want to do you want to do a composting toilet. Here's that. You want to build your earth core, earth work, build it. You know, bin. Here's how to do that. You want to have lighting. I mean, it's just it's a wonderful open source of amazing amounts of data that you've collected and brought into a place where people. I mean, if you wanted to spend hours, well, it would take a long time. Um, that would be an interesting stat to see how many thousands of hours you'd need to go through all of Next World TV because it's amazing what you've accumulated, aggregated there. Uh, Thank you, you could, Richard. You, know, learn, you. you could learn to build, like, you know, a town. Really? Yes. Thank content. you. That, I mean, you really that, did. It's wonderful. I'm so happy to hear you say that. That is exactly how I hope it's used. I, w I would love to. It is so easy. You just you don't have to subscribe or anything. Just go to the site and key in whatever you're interested in. Uh, key in off the grid or solar or something. You'll see solar powered. You know you'll 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 see recording studios, the solar powered entire buildings. You'll you'll see everything from the very low tech to the very high tech. And and I yes, I believe that that is my role to. Curate, to curate a collection. I don't produce any of these myself, but I, I, I search the internet for the best videos on a given topic. And the open source part of it, what I love, for example, I had a video on canning a few weeks ago, and a woman wrote to me and she said, I'm a canning instructor. I teach canning. Your, this video is, um, is teaching something that's wrong. It could lead to botulism. Uh, you have to, boil this, but not boil that. And she, she, so, so she and I corresponded. I found a different video that, that did meet her specifications of safety for canning. I put that up instead with an apology and a correction, and I wrote, this is what it's all about. We're teaching each other. And and I wrote, you know, I, I deleted the other one. I put up the new one. Everybody everybody uh, appreciated that. And I said, you know, if you're planning to can, do this instead, not the other one. And that's exactly what it's about. We're teaching each other. Uh, I've also had videos up that are about herbs that I'm, you know, promoting or that are exciting. And, but but I'm not an I, I, I'm not a uh, an expert by any means. So sometimes I get corrected and people say that's dangerous. That's only for certain body types or whatever. So so it is it is like a self correcting system when people participate in that way. I also have a Facebook page, and I welcome everybody to to connect with each other there. That That's really the blog format. I mean, on the Facebook pages where people can speak to each other, because I don't I don't have a blog feature on Next World TV. It's just videos. So, yes, we should all be teaching each other, right, and comparing notes and sharing resources. Absolutely. Is it under your name or Next World TV? It's, it's, the Facebook is Next World TV. It is so easy to jump onto your site and just sign up. And then you get these little surprises in, in the mail. The one we just got was about big pharma and how all of these pills are just making people outrageous in their response to their environment. Uh, I didn't get, I didn't have time to watch it, but I'm certainly looking forward to 
so it's not only how to, but it's informing you with ideas and information about what's going on in your world and things that yes. the big pharma doesn't want you to know. Like, no, exactly. And we're, we are, you and, and your organization and all, all the all the alternative news media, all the bloggers, all the interested citizens and activists are the new, now we can correspond freely, you know, now, now it's out in the open. I mean, we, we can, we can create the new world with this kind of information sharing. I, I love it that you have an article about anti-fracking. You can hear Richard's ears perk up when I talk about no. <laughs> <laughs> That's become our new uh, cuss word that we're going to use. By the way. What's a frack? Yeah. <laughs> oh, fracking is so, so heartbreaking. It, it breaks my heart. I just, I can't believe that this is our solution to the oil, you know, to, to peak oil. I mean, this is, this is, this is how people who don't know any better think we're going to get through the next hundred years of energy need. And, and it, 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 that and nuclear are, are, well, magnitudes worse than drilling for oil. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, what I would definitely agree. I would, I would actually know? almost, I would almost say, and this is a stretch, but I would almost say I think that the impact of fracking is more destructive than nuclear, and I'm not pro nuclear. I, I, and I say that because no, I know what you're insidious, in this sort of insidious, low level. Oh, we're just getting more oil out of the earth, and here's how we do it. Nobody talks about the you know, 450 chemicals per frack or the 6 billion, million gallons of water that are wasted in each well and they're pretty much destroyed forever. You know, it's obviously it's something exactly, like you know, it's exactly. awful. Yes, right. No, there's there's more consistent damage per well than, I mean, with a nuclear site, we hope everything is okay until something goes right. wrong. But fracking yes. never doesn't destroy and it's just this insidious thing that they've convinced us that, oh, look, we're making, we're getting more natural gas, and natural gas is really good, which is true. Natural gas is really good, but fracking is really, I'll use the word because I can't help myself, evil. Yes, it because is. It's, you know, it's just really evil. What it does to the planet, to the earth, to our water supply, to, you know, it's bad. And you hear all these people that say, Oh, this is great and wonderful, and don't worry about the fact that your water catches on fire. That happens with every well. But they're just flying, and people are swallowing it. And that's one of the great things about yours is you give this absolute truth of this is what it's doing to the earth, and you're not afraid to just take it on. I love it. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's it, Unfortunately, there aren't that many positive <laughs> aspects of it aside from aside from the 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 steps that you know activists are taking to prevent it. it it's it's terrible, and the, the same thing with GMO or EMS radiation. Or I mean, there are topics that you know. There, I, I just wish I had a lot more to say about how to counter it. How how and and, I, and I'm eager to to learn more about your of software, Sherry, uh, how to reduce radiation in your body. I mean, if there ever were something we needed now, it's that. Well, we're going to see if we can provide something and also some charts for your people, make a little video for it, because we've found some a nutritional ways to help look at this. I want to ask you about, do you support wind and sun energy? Yes, I, I do. I it, it's just that they are so far from 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 taking over anything in a substantial way. Of of course I I do. But you know, even to make solar panels and windmills we need petroleum and factories. We're looking at your site, so I'm gonna click on energy here and see what comes up. This is based in today, next week, and next month. Um, right now there's information on here about how to build your own um, energy system. I don't know if it was on your site. But did you have some information about using a bicycle and pumping in your own energy? And, and yes. Uh, uh, what was the? Uh, what was the? I, that sounds familiar. Um, to, to create clean water, for example, 
we're just this clean energy. If you happen to be out and the energy, that uh, your, your electric system goes off, then you can still create energy to run your refrigerator and your cell phones and, and that kind of wow. Thing. No, I, I I would love to to find a video about that. I I don't have one that specifically addresses being able to run your house on it or your you know. I know your, I know that Ed Bigley I know that Ed Bigley Jr. at one point when he had a TV show had done a demo just showing how you couldn't you know what his deal was that he would get up in the morning and make toast but he but his deal with himself was that he would go downstairs and power his he would fire up his electricity of producing bicycles, meaning just getting on a bike and pedaling, you know, pretty fast. And that was the power generated to make the toaster make toast. That's there are great. Out there. Okay, I'm going to look for that. And it, it, I remember seeing something about a gym that had that as a sort of gimmick. <laughs> you know, you, 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 you get on the bike and you generate enough energy to make your smoothie or something. So, I mean, it was it was just a, a cute uh, yeah. selling point for the gym, but but certainly, why 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 don't we why don't we do more like that? Why don't we have more of I don't know bicycles to generate energy for all kinds of things? It, it, it wouldn't it be great if every household just had that as a backup of, of some kind of bike generator for for emergencies? I mean, these storms, these recent storms and floods. Uh, all every you know it's we we do all need to be prepared we need to be prepared for how to how to create clean water without being able to go buy any or or have it pumped or have it coming out of our faucets like we're used to i i this has really shown me that there are there are basic things we can all do to be prepared to to keep a, a sanitary house in in in, in the, the power route or a storm. Yeah. I, I grew up in Cal I grew up in California, so I've always had well not always, but once I grew conscious about it because of the earthquake issue I'll call it in California. And then having been through some major earthquakes um in California, I've always sort of had that as a lean toward you know, you always have water, you always have a certain amount of food, you know, kind of a week has always sort of been the rain. And so a lot of, you know, hand crank radios and way, you know, solar powered battery things, which is a kind of a passion of mine of using small solar panels to produce batteries, you know, energy for batteries that in then turn allow you to make things go and turn and a water filter so that if you need a hand crank water filter so that if you need it to get, you know, use your toilet water or puddle water or creek water, you can actually pump up to this hand water filter and, you know, end up with clean enough drinking water. So, it's, uh, you know, it's the little things that you do. We don't think we need it until we really need it. Boy, it sure is nice to have that backpack of basic things ready to go when you really need it. If yes. you have some great ideas, how would they get those to you? Well, I, I, I'm um, happy to correspond, but the, the, the way I can promote their ideas to, to my list is, is only through video. So the best suggestion I can make is it, it doesn't have to be anything fancy, but just clear clear dialogue and clearly showing their idea. It can be shot with a cell phone. I just need a video, preferably under five minutes, that, that gets to the point and shows people the idea. And I'll be happy to, you know, Blast it out. I have uh, uh, over 9,000 subscribers so far. There are Wonderful. Really supporting little houses, and that seems to fit into the paradigm that, that you're shooting for. And they're so small, you just hook them up to their car and, and drive them everywhere. Uh, right. <laughs> have you seen those? I haven't seen one. And between you and me, I couldn't have one one myself. <laughs> But uh, but I, I grew up in, in apartments. But those tiny houses are are really for the super super organized types. Um, well, actually, there's are, a gentleman. In, there's a gentleman north of here. Uh, I'm in north of San Francisco, and there's a gentleman up in a town called Sebastopol who builds tiny homes. I'll find a link for his site. I can't yes. remember his name or yes. his website. And I'll send it I, to you. I, I think I've heard of him, and and uh, yes. I mean I, there are there are several people, and some of them teach how to build them also. Yes, yeah, 
And the part that I like about it that's so attractive is that you end up with, because I have a feeling, knowing that you're a creative, that you need more space. So you feel like you need more space, and I'm the same way. And I love the idea of having maybe two or three tiny houses, where one is where I sleep and eat and do that sort of thing, and then I have the office where I go and I stand on the computer and I do radio and do shows, and then maybe I have a third one where it's just like the chill tiny house. But, I mean, they're really yeah. beautifully constructed. Yes, that's right, and they're and they're let me say transportable, and they are um, right. Once you build it, I mean, you're mortgage free. Well, and you also have you're, the advantage in that once you find a piece of property, one of the one of the big advantages is that you don't pay property taxes because you're living in what's defined as a mobile home. Right. So you pay a D, so you pay a DMV fee. You don't pay a land tax fee. Exactly. That's a great point. That's a great point. Yes, there's. It's it's the tiny house movement. If anybody listens and is interested, just Google tiny house tiny house movement, and uh, it is. Uh, I I have a video up there where somebody makes the point that it's. I, I was I was about to say it's, it's a not a fad or a trend, but that they're becoming very popular now. And and in one of the videos I have on Next World TV, somebody. From the tiny house movement, makes that no, no, no. McMansions were the fad. That this living in huge houses that just got huger, more uh, almost grotesque proportions. American homes. I've been in homes where three people live there and they have an elevator. You know, in a house, it's not a not an apartment, a house. It's it, a swimming pool. You know, for we we have we have grown our our homes to astronomical proportions and. Actually, people have always lived in tight quarters. We, in our lifetime, you know, basically boomer generation. We don't, we don't really reflect on, on that things just, I mean, this knowledge has taught me how to understand that things don't keep growing and growing and growing. Our home, our energy usage, our economy, things can't just keep growing. We have to, we have to enjoy pulling it back and bringing it into scale. And that the tiny house is, it's like an amusing example of, of how even in America we can pull back a little. They're so efficient, you know, and what I love most is hearing about families and individuals who got out of the rat race, quit their jobs, you know, that, that they their whole financial picture and thereby their lives transformed because they gave up their stuff in a big house. For people in the country, I can see... This is gonna would be easy to do. Like we drilled our own well, when even though there's city water coming out here to the country, we still drilled our own well. What do you suggest for city people? In in, in general, sustainable um, measures. You mean that they can take? Yeah, water, create uh, their own city. Oh. There was this whole law in New York that they were gonna charge anybody who was growing anything fifty dollars a minute, and then come and inspect it. I guess that sort of died away. But throwing something on your balcony is kind of a, a thing a city dweller could do. What kind of other things can city people do? Oh, yes. Okay. Well, if they have any kind of front yard or backyard, uh, like I'm thinking of the boroughs of Queens and Brooklyn, for example, in the Bronx and New York, or, or any, any of those, all those really urban towns in New Jersey, Grow food, grow food in the front, grow food in the back, grow food along the fences, you know, uh, just skip ornamentals and grow food. Put in a peach tree, put in a fig tree, put in an apple tree, take care of that, and nurture the land. Uh, number two, start composting. Oh, well, they go together. Composting might even come first. In, in New York, there are plenty of uh, farmers markets that accept compost on Saturdays. You, you can just walk over there and dump your compost for the week. Uh, there are methods of, of keeping a worm bin in your kitchen. There are clay pot methods. If you have a yard, you can do composting in the yard in a way that critters don't get in. Um, I mean, that reduces our garbage by something like 40% and, and creates fertilizer because city, you know, city backyards and front yards don't have good soil. It's going to have to be amended. 
uh, and composting it is a great free thing to begin that process. You still may need to bring in soil, but uh, those are two things. Uh, for people just in tiny apartments, um, if, if they can even just do a little basil and tomatoes, but that, that's not, you know, going to make a meaningful dent in it. But any any food that anybody can do, herbs, tomatoes, anything, is, is going to cut down on some produce being shipped from somewhere that you have to go buy in a store and somebody's going to put in a plastic bag and you have to spend money on it. And, it, you know, it, it's it's the more we can grow food ourselves, the more healthy systems are set in motion. Um, what else for city dwellers? Uh, I, I, I guess the greatest thing is, is if they can make their cities more bikeable. They already use cars less than uh, urban environments or suburban, I mean, less than suburban and rural environments. So, you know, keep, support the bike share program, bike as much as possible, enforce more bike lanes, and that would be it. Compost bike lanes. Grow as much food as you can on your balcony and front lawns and back lawns. And rooftop gardens. I saw my first rooftop garden in New York City last year. It was a it was a restaurant um, that was running it, and and it was just amazing. It was just beautiful. They were, of course, they can't do deep. They can't do all crops, but what they can do is the herbs and lettuces and and tomatoes and and they even had chickens up there and eggs. Uh, urban urban uh, uh, farms are, are getting going with uh, with chickens and goats and, you know, the the um, ordinances are being changed in cities all around the country where, uh, because they're going back to, they're going, they're going back to when people used to have goats and chickens and all these ordinances against these animals was because, you know, we got cheap food, we got big ag, we got refrigeration and it was just it was it was just not done anymore to keep goats in your backyard in Brooklyn, but but let's bring them back. You know, let's, I mean, I, I want animals. To be comfortable, don't get me wrong, but I, I believe I believe the more food you can produce in your front yard and backyard, the better. I saw an initiative too of cleaning up empty lots and having a community garden. And Absolutely, I love that yes. idea. Which brings yeah, that's me, right. Which brings me around to another subject. In many of these towns that you see the city ordinances says you can't grow food in your front yard, even though they're, they flower and they're beautiful, and they're taking these people to court. Do you have anything to let people know legally what they can do or can't do? Well, I, I have some videos up of, about at least two cases like that, and it, it seems to me with enough publicity, the city backs down, and it's just embarrassed. Um, but no, I, I don't. I just, I don't know exactly how to legally go about that. But, but with enough publicity, it, it's the kind of thing that goes viral. You know, grandpa fines for growing vegetables, or it, and it, it's it's the public is on the side of the people wanting to grow vegetables. So well, I say places. go for it. There's two places on your site that I see where you're kind of edging towards. Um, law. One of them is um, people are not allowed now to keep or share their own seeds. And the other one is, um, I've just forgotten it as, we, as I was talking about it. Um, Did it have to do with raw milk or? or well, raw, um, with the GMOs, raw milk. So is there a way to just get around those pieces on your site? And if I, would I really, um, Get an earful if I ask you to talk about GMOs. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I mean, of course, I'm, I'm sure your listeners are familiar with the genetically modified organisms. It's, it are, uh, you know, totally, I mean, we are the guinea pigs. We are, in our food supply, 88% of our corn, for example, is, is genetically modified. That means the popcorn at the movie theater, it, it's the, Corn and all the processed food is what children are eating at school and everywhere else. And it's proven to be extremely dangerous. It messes with your immune system. Uh, uh, it, 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 it makes you gain weight. It makes it, 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 it's just this 
destructive as all get out to the human body in something like 40 countries around the world, they demand labeling. And in the U.S., we still don't have a law in place where we demand that these foods be labeled. So we just have to I, – I, I mean, I just want to play it safe by buying organic. I just assume it's GMO if it doesn't say non-GMO. And uh, we should all be buying that as much as possible and growing it as much as possible. But I think a, another interesting thing is the government has gotten um, – well, it, 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 there are there are laws that prohibit people. You know, you you you're not allowed to sell me milk from your goat. Okay, and and I understand the reasons for that, but but we in Maine they have something. There's a town Sedgwick, Maine, that has food sovereignty, food sovereignty, which means they 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 have won the right legally to have that kind of trade, that they they won the right to take responsibility for if anything goes wrong when they buy dairy and meat products from each other and small farms. I mean, we, we need to be able to do this, I feel. I mean, I'm, I'm all for safety measures, but I really feel we need to be able to trade food with each other that we grow and, and, and take the risks and, and not have the government involved. Now, one of the things that Richard is very interested in is herbs, and there is so much that could go in your health channel about what this, this, and this herb does. Um, I'd like to hear both of you. Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, I, I don't. I have actually, Sherry. You'll be happy to hear on my new site, nextworldhealthtv.com. There's a whole section called uh, uh, herb, you know, plants, herbs, um, healing herbs, bunnies. Let me tell you exactly what it is. Foods that heal, and then and then uh, I have herbs, foods that heal, and then herbs, spices, and plants that heal. The whole section. It's a, it's just like Next World TV. If, if you have looked at it, it, it's just just type in the word health. Nextworldhealthtv.com, and uh, uh, some other categories. I have foods that heal, uh, health and environment. Integrative healing, make your own. It's a whole section. It, it'll probably um, really appeal to women because there's a lot of natural beauty products that, that you can make yourself easily, even sunscreen, shampoo, household cleansers. Uh, sky's the limit, really. Beauty mask. Um, I have a category called uh, power healing with supplements and uh, wisdom through the ages, uh, surprises, random great things. Uh, it's it, it's um, a also motivation and and you know thing um, spiritual inspiration and teaching. So there might be a video about easy breathing exercises or um, uh, Taoist philosophy. Or it, 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 it's a different spin on it, but it all goes back to mind, body, spirit, healing, and and taking responsibility. I should warn people if they go on your site to plan a day or two or. <laughs> <laughs> because this leads to that, and oh, that seems interesting, and let's go over here and look at that. Um, it's amazing the depth and breadth of what you have on your site. It's just very, absolutely incredible. How do you have Thank time, you. How do you have time to do all this stuff, and you do it for free? Uh, well, um, I... I my my sister Celia Farber it, it contributes a lot. She has her own category on both sides. She's a, a a science writer, and she's one of the pioneering journalists who wrote about the the myth of HIV/AIDS. Uh, in in short, it 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 uh, I don't know if you or your listeners are familiar with this, but HIV has not been proven to be the cause of AIDS. Um, it's very similar to the the vaccine. Issues, you know, is that the drugs do more harm than good, and everybody is. Uh, they're not saying that there's no AIDS, by the way. They're saying that the immunity breakdown that is not caused by HIV and is not going to be healed by removing HIV. So they're not saying there's no such thing as suppressed immunity and that it increased in the 80s and it's called, you know, they're not saying people aren't dying of AIDS. They're just saying HIV is not the boogeyman, hasn't been proven to be. So so she is my sister, you know, and we uh, 
uh, we have similar beliefs on, on all this stuff, and she contributes really great pieces for me about, about, about things, uh, it just the importance of healing the gut and how the connection between vaccinated children and autism and, and that it's not just that these chemicals went to their brain, but that they, they have gut disorders. They don't metabolize food, which is why they cry and scream so much because their gut, it, it's, it's, I'm sorry, it's, it's really depressing and I'm not an expert on this, but, but she, she is, uh, really into lacto-fermented foods and, and all, all this about healing the gut, which is, you know, both ancient and new wisdom. Uh, I, I have uh, also brought another young lady on board whose name is Bree Sullivan, and she's contributing some great folks both sides. So I have some help, and um, and, I, and I've and i started this whole new channel. I, I, I post about one a day, and um, I really love, I really just love the feedback from the subscribers, and I love uh, hearing from you that you feel it's a valuable resource, so it, it makes it all worth it. Thank you for asking. Celia's uh, column is like healing highlights uh, as we yes. visit your site. I right. like this topic, co-housing. What is co-housing? Um, it's all the communities that are it, – it, it's any community where, where people are sharing something instead of drawing boundaries. So it, it can be a neighborhood that poured out the fences and decided to share things or eco-villages, real – you know, dedicated eco communities, some of which have survived since the seventies all over the world. And 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 just some new ways people are 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 sharing resources, belongings and land and you know, co housing it can just be uh, maybe a, a group of young people or old people who, who, who share, who have a common kitchen, share meals. To bring down expenses and to I've actually seen you know, I've actually seen some footage of I'll try and find that footage of footage of a uh, back to tiny houses. Uh, we'll call them small houses because that sounds so much larger at the uh, Small homes <laughs> uh, where they built a community where that's what they do is they each have their small their tiny house together on a large lot and then they have common cooking area and common gardening area. And they're not living really as a commune. They're living as individuals on common property with common garden, common cooking. That's right. That's right. So it's, and actually, it's commune-like, but they all have, they for the most part, all have day jobs. Other day jobs allow them to be at home and do their work from home. Right, right. I, I live in, in a community very much like that myself, although it's not an eco-village, and we don't share a kitchen or food. We, uh, we do grow a garden together and we have a compost we, it's eight homes that share eight acres and it, it used to be a bungalow colony in the Hudson Valley and uh, it's uh, it, it's a little too small to be you know there, there's not there's not the kind of focus that, that, that an eco village would have but I do have the benefit of sharing land with the seven other homeowners and and it feels right to me I mean none of us could afford eight acres but we have eight acres together we but, we pay common fees and we pay a lot less for things like lawn mowing, snow plowing than we would pay on our own little plot. I love Wonderful. it. On your site, there's something for everyone, and I love it that we're expanding into health. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I I I'm excited also because that was there was really such a demand for that, and it didn't feel like it always fit with my editorial direction of Next World TV and. It's sort of, uh, you know, like a store bringing in a, a category of an item or something and seeing it fly off the shelves. I, I, everything that I ran about health just was so popular. So after three years, I decided to, to make room for another channel and, and also expand to a little more um, mental and spiritual issues. I, I envision you being the, and I mean this in a good way, because there are some well, I'll just say this part. Uh, I envision you being the Huffington Post of open source information. Oh, wow. Oh, thank you. Such a, you. Such a wonderful oh. open source aggregator of, you know, you started with Next World TV, and now the next section is going to be the Next World Health TV, which I think I really feel is going to be huge because that's such a great area for people to know about. And it's still part of that, in, in my view. 
it's so part of the building your own life and really taking responsibility for their own health and doing it in community is even better. Thank you. I agree with you. I agree with you. We we have to be we have to be really stick together and trade notes and and take responsibility and we we absolutely have to. I I I I, I just believe things like Eastern medicine are going to explode in, in the next few years and, and all all the natural healing modalities because because it's about keeping things in balance as opposed to taking a pill. Well, it also comes, you know, if from a certain perspective, uh, for example, uh, I had a master herbalist for many years ago. And ah. the interesting thing to me is that a lot of this, what we're moving, you know, back to the future, really, is that so much of what's coming forward is ancient teaching. Like right. how to grow our own food, how to use the herbs that we can grow ourselves and then consume to keep ourselves healthy is part of what most of our ancestors had and have. And in indigenous right. cultures, they have a lot of this. It's just, you know, yes, of course you can work in the garden because that's where you get your food from. It's an amazing exactly. it's, you know, so wonderful. Right. And I had no idea of, of, of the, you know, apple cider vinegar, the benefits of coconut oil or turmeric. I had no idea that there's real healing and antiseptic properties. And, and you know, I just thought these things were interesting spices. Cinnamon is very healing. I, 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 it, it really, there's a medicine chest in our, it, it, it growing right outside. And in our cupboards, even. We are incredibly grateful to Vivi Spofford for being with us today. Be sure to join her on her Facebook to see what's going on. Go to nextworldtv.com, sign up in her new one, nextworldhealthtv.com. Become a part of the movement to go back. I don't know if it's go back. It's just great for us, I guess the idea that we can be self-responsible in a very easy and beautiful and community way. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you so much for, for, for inviting me on your show. And Richard, so wonderful to connect with you and your audience. And, and I'll continue to follow your work as well. That was great. Again, even though I'm having to listen to myself, which I do not enjoy, <laughs> it's so much information. It's so amazing what she has put together and what she has in terms of information. And now I'm really excited to see the Next World Health TV as well. We were looking through some of that to sort of entice people to go look at it. Um, I think it's incredible. We do very serious things like this. And then we do very frivolous things that we're going to be doing on our next uh, vocal profile in live, which is Tuesday evening. We're going to do compatibility, some famous couples who are together and why they're together, and some people who are alone in the person we may be looking at. In vocal profile in live, we try to bring this to the public in a way that will um, bring publicity to what we're doing. And then on the blog talk and radio information, we try to spread the word. So if you want to join us for Vocal Book on Live, it's going to be Tuesday evening. And if you think this wonderful information that Lily brings us is good stuff, and it is, then tweet this on your Facebook for people to come back and listen. And we did change the name of the show, so the link is here at blogtalkradio.com, Sherry Edwards. And just go back and look for Beauty Robert as a, what do you call it, a featured word, a, a keyword? Featured? Keyword, sure. Let's go with keyword, yes. Okay. And remember, those of you who um, have the chat, just incredible amounts of information here. I don't know why that turned pink or blue or whatever it did there. Incredible amounts of information that you can follow off the channel. 
Thank you for being here. And we're not sorry we went over. It was good stuff. Great chat as always. And thanks, Steve, for the scoop on telemarine. Yes, we will check that out. We'll see you all next week and or on Tuesday. Have a great weekend, everybody.